So I think it's about time to start. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I know this is the last day of the conference, and it's nearly lunchtime. But I will try to make this half hour well worth for you. So my name is Shandor Guba. I'm co-founder and developer at Bansai Cloud, acquired by Cisco. I'm working for more than five years with Kubernetes and the Fluent ecosystem. I'm a huge observability fan. And the title is Show Me Your Label, I Will Tell You Who You Are, which may sound a catchphrase, but actually I will show you how to exploit log, uh, labels for your logging subsystem. Let's start with the basics. Uh, Kubernetes logging is not that difficult. Uh, the container runtime puts the uh, container's STD out into the host file system, and the Kubelet service access to these logs and provide it to the users through the Kubernetes API. It's that simple. It's nothing much you can configure about. What's the problem with this? Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, these logs are only stored on the host file system, and eventually they will get rotated or fill the node file system. And the other part is that uh, kubectl logs is not always the best way to consume your logs. So what you can do, you want to collect these logs and transport to your uh, log analy analyzation system. But there are other problems with this as well. You need privileged access to access the host file system, and there is no separation of logs on the host file system. So all kind of pods logs uh, in different namespaces are just uh, stored on the same uh, folder. But let's see how this uh, system would look like on Kubernetes. And uh, you need a collector to collect uh, the log files uh, from the systems and push them out to an output. Uh, eventually, you will need an aggregator uh, that will collect the logs from these uh, agents and push it them to forward to another log analyzation system or whatever destination you want. And basically, this was the reason behind logging operator that it was born. Because if you are doing such kind of system, you will end up creating tons of configuration files with hundreds of lines of configuration code. And uh, a logging operator for this architecture under the hood uses Fluentbit as a daemon set. We collect all the logs uh, from the node uh, level, and we transport it to a FluentD stateful set. The heart of the logging operator is a label router plugin developed at Bonsai Cloud, which helps you to distinguish logs based on Kubernetes metadata. So you can create different log flows. And if you identify the log flow, it's really easy to after just apply any filter like parser filter or, or, or enhancing with GOIP data. And at the end of the log flow, you can uh, post your uh, logs to any uh, kind of uh, output that FluentD supports. If we take a look from the other direction, how a user would use a logging operator? Obviously, uh, as an operator, it will use Kubernetes custom resources. There are two main types of these custom resources, flows and outputs. So let's take a closer look on, on these resources. A uh, flow can be a flow or a cluster flow. A flow works within a namespace. A cluster flow works across namespaces. You can use selectors to distinguish your log flow. So uh, it works like Kubernetes label selectors, like when you uh, get in Kubernetes pods uh, from your cluster. Uh, you can apply filters on those log flows, like Nginx parser or Prometheus exporter filter or any type you want. At and the end of the flow, you have to uh, specify outputs. Uh, let's see outputs. Similarly to flow and uh, cluster flow, there is output and cluster output. And the same thing applies to here, that output works within a namespace, and cluster output works across namespaces. Uh, in the output configuration, you can use Kubernetes secret references to configure the um, credentials or sensitive information that you need for this uh, to work. Uh, I don't have enough time to dig deeper in the features of logging operator, uh, but um, since the first le release of August uh, in 2018, uh, we grew a thriving community. On GitHub, we have like about 1,000 GitHub stars. Uh, we have more than half thousand people on our Slack channel. And I'm really proud that uh, Rancher's official backend for logging is actually logging operator. There are a lot of uh, great features that's uh, built on top of Fluentd, like scale uh, scaling and draining the Fluentd instances, 
applying configuration checks before the configuration goes to live, and it offers secret and certificate management, but you can uh, read uh, about all the features on the documentation. So as we have a broad experience with logging operator now, we should go and try it out. Uh, we have a friend, Bob. Bob is an infrastructure engineer, and he has to operate uh, an application on Kubernetes cluster. For the sake of example, this uh, application will produce Nginx access logs. And uh, he has three requirements. Uh, one is that uh, he needs to extract metrics from those logs and create an alert if the 500 and 400 error codes uh, reach 40% of the total request. Uh, he needs to create a word map and visualize the origin IP addresses of the request. And for example, a security team wants to store all the logs in raw format in an object store, for example, in AWS S3. So we know logging operator. Uh, we can create three different flows for the three different use cases. One to put the logs on S3, one to enrich the log data with GOIP uh, metadata, and one to uh, extract uh, the response codes and uh, create an alert for them. So I will be doing a live demo, so I prepared some uh, um, uh, software on, our, on my cluster, and I hope it will work. So uh, on my cluster, I pre-installed logging operator, obviously. I uh, installed Prometheus operator for metrics, and I installed OpenSearch for the GOIP dashboard. And I installed MCOM UI, which is a Cisco product on top of logging operator, but we won't use any of the extended feature, but it has a really nice web UI to uh, help you follow what happens on the cluster. This is just the default Loki flow. You can ignore it for now. And uh, I have a cheat sheet, so I will be really fast, but please try to hang with me. So I already installed the log generator on my cluster. Now we can see that uh, if we are uh, tailing uh, the logs from those cluster, they will be uh, standard Nginx uh, access logs in raw format. So the first uh, uh, requirement that we fulfilled is to actually install the S3 output. I won't show to you guys because uh, this is my AWS credential and I don't have that <laughs> credit card to support you, all of you, but believe me, this is the secrets inside this uh, secret. And after that, I'm applying uh, an S3 output. And this is how simple it is to just create an S3 output. You just need to specify the, uh, the bucket, the region, and the secrets for the AWS account. Uh, I will apply to this to, this, to the cluster. And uh, to, to make this work, I need to create on also a cluster flow. I haven't mentioned, but I use, uh, use the cluster output for S3 to be able to use a cluster flow to gather all the logs from the uh, cluster itself. Uh, there is a name, the all log. I applied one filter, the record transformer, to remove the annotations, because annotations are really variables on Kubernetes. I have an empty selector, which will select all the pods from the cluster. And I uh, reference the previously created output, the S3 output. So, so if I apply this, uh, on the UI, we can see that uh, the custom resources I created, it's visible uh, in, inside the system. And eventually, after reconciling and fluent config reload, the log starts to flow to the S3. Uh, for speeding up things, I will cheat a bit and apply the last step of the next, uh, next example, because uh, this way, we will have some output already during the presentation. But I will uh, show you how you create a new flow from scratch. So the first, uh, I created a null output, which is basically, and I applied again, so which is basically uh, a dev null uh, device inside Fluendi. So I will just drop all the logs that comes into Fluendi. And I need that because I need an output, but I don't need the uh, logs itself. I just want to extract the, the Prometheus data from it. So first of all, uh, my first step is to create a flow, is to have a name of the flow, I will reference the null output, and I have a selector, which is a label selector. So this uh, label, the app.kubernetes.io per name per, uh, equals log generator, is the label on my pod that I want to collect the logs from. So I have the raw logs. 
What's next? Next, I want to parse those logs. So I know that these are our Nginx access logs. So I will apply the Nginx parser on top of it, and I will uh, uh, set the types like size and code to numbers, which is really useful if you are uh, ingesting into open search and you want to make aggregation on top of these uh, uh, metrics as well. So I have the row logs, I parse them. The next step is to actually apply the Kubernetes uh, filter on top of it. So because I have named fields from the parse, I can uh, create a matrix filter uh, with a type counter. This will count all the logs that are uh, flowing in. And I can apply labels, uh, like the code label, and get the value of the code label from the log itself. So I have matrix HTTP response total with each different code that are happening inside my Nginx access log. And more on over that, I will apply the pod and namespace uh, labels as well, because uh, this way, I can identify which pods actually produce the logs because in the Prometheus point of view, it will see only the Fluentd pods, but with this trick, you can actually uh, have a source of the pods. And um, as I mentioned, I already applied this. So if everything goes according to plan, I will have metrics, uh, Yes, I, I'm getting metrics uh, really fast from, from Fluentd, and uh, these are the 200s, 400s, 300s, et cetera. And uh, there was one another task that I should create an alert for it, and it's just uh, as easy as creating any alert for, uh, for Prometheus, because it's actually Prometheus metrics. So it may seem complex because I have some label magic here, but it's just the simple, uh, Prometheus uh, alert rule that you would use anytime. I apply to this cluster, and uh, I should see in the alerts, yeah, it was already applied, sorry, I prepared the demo, <laughs> and uh, it's a pending alert uh, on these uh, logs that I'm uh, outputting now. So I have one thing left. I need to do the, the GeoIP uh, flow. Actually, I can reuse the flow, because you remember we didn't uh, output it, the log anywhere. Uh, one thing is that you should do before uh, ingesting into Elasticsearch, you want to uh, make sure that the mapping is proper uh, for the uh, data that you want to inject, especially if it's like uh, uh, GeoIP data, because Elasticsearch needs to know uh, what kind of fields you are ingesting. So I applied it, and uh, let's see what I configured. The first is really simple, it's just an open search uh, Elastic open source, I will use the name interchangeably. But uh, in the open search, we have the secret to the credentials, and uh, we have other uh, logstash format and uh, other configuration. And, but the interesting stuff is like uh, we have uh, updated a GIP filter to our previous flow, it is here. And it will automatically translate IP data to GIP data. And uh, the most important part is the location array, which are actually coordinate pairs. So we will use this field to plot the uh, origin uh, IP addresses on a world map. And if everything goes according to plan, I will just quickly port forward to inside my uh, open search dashboard. I will just steal the, uh, the credentials. I will log into open search. And um, because I have uh, the mapping already in place, I can to, uh, go to the visualization, create a new visualization in the coordinate map. I have the Nginx previously applied uh, index mapping. I can create a bucket uh, with GL coordinates. I can use a Gahwish format and the location or field to plot actual uh, uh, re request origin IP addresses. And as you can see, uh, it was successful and we are already counting uh, the request numbers uh, uh, and the origin IPs. So uh, let's get back to the presentation. And uh, with this solution, we actually fulfilled all the requirements. We have the S3 bucket filling the logs, we have the uh, GeoIP filter enabled, and we have the alert rules in place. And moreover, with the Kubernetes labels attached to logs, metrics, and everything, it's really easy to use uh, any tool uh, for correlation, metrics, traces, logs, etc. And are we happy with that? Bob is not happy. Bob has a question. 
uh, he, what if he wants to tail those logs? Of course, he can use the kubectl logs to tail the logs, but there is two problems with this. The flow is a much more complex filtering mechanism than a kubectl log. So it's not just one pod or more pod, or it can be spanned across namespaces and a lot, lot of other stuff. And we do a lot of work on our logs. So transformation, enhancing with uh, GeoIP data, parsing, and we won't want to lose this. So, and uh, want, I wanted to mention that I want to show that how easy it is to build on top of logging operator for your own use cases. So if you want to do such things like uh, tailing the logs, uh, we need a CLI uh, on our computer that actually uh, print the logs on the terminal. We need a service, we will call it LogSocket, uh, that can function as a Fluentd output. And uh, we need the way uh, that these two uh, things is communicating. And uh, do we want to add more thing to do it? Uh, and I would say, why not? Let's make it more interesting and add access control to log flows as well. So imagine a situation where you have a bunch of logs, bunch of namespaces, and you have flows in space, uh, place because you want to output your logs in your preferred logging system, but you want to give access to different pe persons to uh, actually tell those logs, but we want to specify who can access to which logs uh, from the log stream. And to do this, there can be uh, several different solutions, but I would say use labels. And a, r a really good example of using labels uh, to actually uh, reach an Airbag uh, situation is the Prometheus label proxy, which is doing exactly this, but in front of Prometheus. So, we can define a label structure like airbuck per uh, namespace underscore service account name and the value can be a policy. Uh, for the sake of example, we will use uh, Kubernetes service account tokens for authentication because uh, they are there and it's really easy to use. You just need to send a bearer token with your requests. And uh, an example of this role would be airbuck per default underscore Alice allow, which means if your pod has this label, it will be able, uh, Alice will be able to um, tail those traffic, and if it's denied, it, it, uh, she's permitted to tell, uh, she, she's denied to tail this traffic, and uh, we can define a default policy like airbag per policy and all will deny if you want to like, you know, have pods that everyone can tell. I know it may sound a bit complex at first, but let, uh, let's go through some of the uh, architecture. So we have a CLI tool that's connect to a lock socket. After that, uh, the log socket authenticate against a Kubernetes service account. Uh, it uses the token and the Kubernetes API to get a username out of it. And on the CLI, we should have specify a flow name. And the log socket will create an, an output. It's a logging operator custom resource. And patch the output uh, reference into the flow that we uh, decided to want to tell. And after a reconciliation cycle, the logging operator uh, will pull the information from the custom resources, generating the Fluentd configuration, and eventually the log starts to flow to the CLI tool through the LogSocket service. So let's see this in action. I need to go back to my cheat sheet, and I will do the same trick that I will apply a bunch of uh, command, and after that I will start to uh, uh, describing what I've done uh, with those commands. So first, I will need to create the service accounts uh, for the uh, two users, Alice and Bob. And uh, I will use some Helm upgrade command uh, to just uh, prepare the stage. And I will use part of this command to actually start flowing the logs. Yes, so this is not going. I'm in the wrong directory, but that's not a problem. So what have I done here? The first, uh, we created a service account, and now Kubernetes automatically created token for it, uh, alert in 1.24, this won't work. So actually, the latest Kubernetes uh, work a bit differently. 
Uh, we get this token uh, out into uh, to an environment variable for later use, and we will do the same for both. And what I've done is to update this uh, full service, the log generator, to have these extra labels, like I described before. I have this Airbus per default underscore Alice allow. So Alice will allow to tail the full service. And uh, I have a, a bar service which will tell us that uh, Bob is allowed to tell these logs and Alice is uh, allowed as well, just we can see it. And the last um, command is the Kubernetes tail command, which is our command that we just wrote. We, diff um, we specify if we want to tail a flow or a cluster flow, we specify the namespace and the name of the flow, we give the token, and we start to, start to tailing those logs. And as you can see, in my terminal, it's already started to tailing the, those logs. And compared to what I showed earlier, these are parse logs and ridged and in a, a nice JSON format. On Bob's side, I uh, did some tweaking and I only print out uh, what uh, logs I have permission because if I don't have permission, uh, I have a permission denied uh, error. So I'm getting logs from the bar service, but I have a permission denied on the uh, full service. And uh, if uh, I want to change uh, the outcome of, of this, I just need to upgrade the service. So I will upgrade the service to permit, uh, to deny a list uh, to tell the bar service. And I will use the same syntax like Bob. So what we have to see now is that actually each of our users can just uh, access to one service. There is a sum of latency between actually upgrading the pod labels and getting the, 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 per, uh, the permissions right. Uh, and until that, I just wanted to show that if we are back on our UI, we can see, sorry, let's click. We can see that what we created uh, before is actually in place. So we can see the S3 uh, uh, cluster flow. We have the GIP flow down here. And you can see that actually the uh, log socket patched inside to this GIP flow and have, have this output uh, working for uh, it. And uh, another uh, benefit of using labels is actually you can tell who has a, a permission to access a pod because they are on the pod uh, labels. So if I just use a, a simple kubectl command and check uh, what pods Alice can access, uh, I just can print it out. So because we are using labels, it's really straightforward to just um, know what you are doing in your cluster. And uh, yeah, the upgrade uh, finished. And because you know the HAM chart reconciled the deployment and the pod, we will see that uh, both Bob and Alice will have permission tonight uh, for the service that they can access and they can uh, tell logs uh, for what they can access. And uh, just to summarize what we achieved today, we created complex logging flows and we can edit those logging flows dynamically, adding uh, new filters or outputs or anything and it's done automatically by the logging operator. We can tell flows on daemon with the benefits of uh, don't have to specify the selectors and have the enriched parse log for, for, uh, for us to tell. And on top of that, uh, we added access control on these logs, which is pretty cool if you think about compared to what we have just uh, by using kubectl logs. And the fun fact that uh, one year before I had a presentation at FluentCon, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to achieve with logging operator is to actually add Arba Cruise to different log stream. And one year later, here we are and I'm talking about this. My last slide is about the useful stuff that helped us to uh, make this demo. The logging operator, the log socket. Uh, the demo will be uh, published uh, on GitHub, so you can try this at home, as well as log socket. This is open source. I don't recommend it to use in production, but uh, we will get there as well. So thank you for listening to me, uh, and if you have questions, there is a mic in the center of the room, and please, please ask.
Yeah, uh, please use the microphone on the, on the middle of the room. Hello. I wanted to ask about uh, outputs and um, IAM roles for service accounts. Can we use those instead of access keys? Can we use instead of? Uh, instead of access keys in outputs, can we use service accounts and IAM roles? Yes. Uh, so what kind of uh, the, the outputs is uh, ba basically Fluentd outputs. So if the Fluentd outputs supports the IAM roles, which are they supporting, for example, for AWS, S3, and things like this, yes, absolutely, you can use that. OK, thank you. And also, um, you talked about outputs and flows, but there is also a third object, which is logging. Yeah, um, that's we, true. <laughs> yeah, and we use uh, one logging in our setup currently, but when would you recommend to use more than one? I don't really recommend to use more than one logging. It is possible, but it will duplicate the daemon set uh, and duplicate the Fluentd as well. If you need like hard uh, separation, for example, there was a case uh, when the cluster had like hybrid clusters with Windows and Linux nodes. So in that way, you want to use two different logging or two different agent uh, configuration. It depends on what you want. And you can use like uh, namespace selectors or other things to not duplicate the daemon set, but actually specify which nodes you want which agents. OK, thank you. Welcome. Yeah. If we don't have any more questions, thank you for listening again. Have a nice KubeCon. Safe travel. <laughs>